So when we talk about energy storage, uh, it's always one of the questions we, we get when we talk about this. Well, how much energy are you storing? And so each individual well, uh, 5,000 feet deep, seven inch casing, uh, can be 16 to 20 megawatts. But our notion is not to use one well per power plant, but to cluster them. So our recent research has shown that we cluster six wells together uh, to a single power plant will we'll store up to 250 megawatt hours of, of, of power. How much is that for those that don't understand? 250 megawatt hours, um, the system will, will draw from that over, over 10 hours, so that's 25 megawatts per hour. So a typical home uses kilowatts per hour. So it's, it's, it's a very, very large amount of energy. Industrial scale um, power plants, wind turbines are in the megawatts per hour. So you get more scale in a sense. That's correct, yeah. And the idea is to get the power from solar or other sources that are renewable or? Right, so ideally from solar, but, but also we're looking at using um, excess uh, power generation during the day to uh, run the high temperature heat pumps. So the high temperature heat pumps can just take basically ambient temperature out of the air, add 200 degrees to it in a single pass and, and, and put that hot water into the well. Well, is it still a renewable? Because during the day, this is especially true in California, you know, a lot of people have talked about the duck curve. So during the day in California, when the sun's shining and the windmills are spinning, there's a tremendous amount of curtailed in, uh, energy, gigawatts of energy. The solar panels are disconnected, the windmills are turned off. Do we Be have extra? We sense. have gigawatts of extra energy. Yeah, we have to disconnect. It's disconnected, it's, it's sold to neighboring states or some states are even paid to take it. But we can use that excess energy for storage. And you're seeing a lot of, a lot of this going on with um, the storage systems today. Uh, the biggest ones going on are in lithium ion batteries. So basically, they're large installations of Tesla walls. And uh, so I mean, lithium ion batteries, I mean, they're, the, the technology is it's the same batteries in your laptop computer, right? But it's done in scale. These big battery farms, however, uh, they are short duration for, for discharge, two to four hours. They're usually used for solving interrupts in the transmission during the day, but not for, not, not for long duration energy storage. The answer to this, this, this is called the duck curve, where during the day, the, you get this big trough where there's the demand is low and the generation is high. And as soon as the sun goes down, everybody comes home and, and they turn on the TV and they turn on the oven and turn on the air conditioner. There's a big demand that goes up. And today, most of that is being, is being uh, accommodated through uh, gas-fired peaker plants. So the answer, one of the answers to this, this uh, duck curve, flattening it out and providing, providing flat generation is long duration ener energy storage. And this is one of the solutions they were proposing for, for doing that, using this vast inventory of, of idle wells, instead of plugging and abandoning them and, and, and throwing them away, but repurposing them for, for the storage. Can you tell us how would it work? So the energy will get generated from solar and other sources because California has a lot during the day. And then it will heat up the water, the water will get stored into the well, and then at night the water will come out and then transmit the energy back to the grid. Is that yes. how it works? Yes. So the conversion of heat to electricity is, is something which is well known. So if you go to the, the solar power plants out in the Salton Sea or up at the geysers up near Santa Rosa, out near Mammoth Lakes, there's, there's another power plant out there. The way that that, is, that heat is converted to electricity is the same way that we're doing it. It's called a binary system. So basically what, what you do is you have, a, you have very, very hot water and you use a heat exchanger to transfer that heat to the power generation system. So the power generation system has, has, has in it a fluid which has a very low uh, 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 boiling point. That's why we use um, supercritical CO2 or helium or hydrogen. And so when you heat it, it flashes to vapor. That vapor spins a turbine, generates electricity, you condense it, back to the system and you heat it up again and recycle it through the system like that. So the hot water then that we are, that we are generating is a is complete closed loop so that it never escapes and we don't lose any water. All we're tr are transferring back and forth is heat. We're putting heat into the well during the day, we're taking heat out of the well at night and converting that heat for, into electricity for use in the grid. 
You are thinking of using some of these wells that are in urban areas like Long Beach, right? We are, and uh, there's a number of wells, uh, especially in the Long Beach area. Uh, one, of, one of the things that we, we're, we've been talking about is the drilling islands in Long Beach Harbor. These are places where there's hundreds of wells, and the electricity fees to run those islands is in the many, many millions of dollars per month, seven to nine million dollars per month. So they're paying a very high price for electricity, and they have a lot of wells which are producing very, very little oil, um, and that they're going to be subject to the abandonment requirements by the state of California very, very soon. So we're thinking that instead of abandoning them, uh, an idea would be to convert them to these power generating systems. So six wells, of, as I just mentioned, uh, would be up to about 250 megawatt hours of storage. Um, so they could use that power there locally on the island to, to continue to dry, run their pumps, to process their fluids, and to do all the things that they do there, as opposed to buying energy from, uh, from Southern California, Anderson. Uh, the Port of Long Beach is another area that we're interested in talking to them. Uh, all of these areas are, have mandates from the state of California to go to green energy solutions. So right now they're getting energy from Southern California Edison, which is a combination of gas power, fire power plants, to solar and, and wind, et cetera. So they're not completely green. This would be a completely green solution for them, providing the power that they have that they need using assets that they already have um, to, to generate the power. And let me talk about one of the bills that was passed uh, in the legislature, which is impacting this. Uh, it was called Senate Bill 1137. This bill is a uh, environmental uh, setback bill, and it was uh, specifies that no, an oil well that is within 3,200 feet of a sensitive receptor, which is you and me, uh, buildings, parks, schools, houses, et cetera, um, as that well is, is being operated, if it needs maintenance, you can't do maintenance on it, you have to abandon it. The only permit that's allowed for it is abandonment. So two of the drilling islands for in the Long Beach Harbor are within 3,200 feet of the shore, which means that the only thing that they can do with those wells, if they need help, they need maintenance, is to abandon them. So our proposal would be that instead of abandoning them, to convert them to these power systems instead. So they, they could use the power then to continue to, to do their work there. The, the, the islands have an obligation, a contractual obligation, uh, with the city of Long Beach but long after the uh, oil, is, the oil production is done, they have to continue injecting water. And the reason they have to continue injecting water is to manage subsidence in the Long Beach Harbor. When the Long Beach oil field first came on, on production in pre-1930, the, the harbor sank about 10 feet. So today when you go there, you can see a lot of the, a lot of the, the area there is actually landfill. They've actually brought new material in to create, create land where it had subsided. So, they have to continue injecting water for 15 plus years to manage that subsidence. That means they have to operate the pumps. That means they're going to need electricity. So the idea is that you can you can convert a number of these wells, half the wells, however many you need, to to the power generating system. That would then be able to power this, this injection that goes. So through. that could be a good test for your project to see how it goes, and then it can get rolled out to other places. It, it would, and there's a lot of advantages for areas like that. So I talked about the clusters, the six wells of clusters, uh, to give us uh, 250 megawatt hours. But when you go out to the islands uh, and, and, and to Long Beach Harbor, one of the things you see is these wells are very, very close together. The, the wells and the, and the islands are three feet apart. They're between as far apart as you and me, and maybe even closer. So to get six wells together is a very is very easy to do that way. And there are this this thick, it's a, kind of like it's a very small footprint. Down, yes. five thousand feet. Or yeah, and those those wells, those wells have varying depths to to the top of the the oil producing zones, and, and we would have to uh, you know, abandon put cement plugs to the oil producing zones and use the rest of the wells. But we've been using uh, we've been using some artificial intelligence work to look at all the data. Uh, in California to tell us, you know, what, which, uh, which of those wells has, has the requirements we need, where are they, how deep are they, et cetera. So 